Hi everyone and welcome to our first virtual puppet club. I'm so excited that you could join us this summer. Um, remember all these puppets that you build you can record and send me uh, video or pictures of what you make with them and you can post them through here or email them to me or if you want to upload if it's a larger file you can upload it to Google Drive and just share it to my Google Drive. Um, it's the same address of hkent at McFarland library.org. So today, our very first puppet build, we are going to be making cereal box puppets. Those of you who have your puppet kits and those of you who have gathered your materials, our first thing that we're going to need is a cereal box. We have a template that we can use here for our um, puppets. Now, you do not need to use these templates. You can draw your own puppets, but I provided these just as a starting point so you can see what you need to do and then you can go back um, and create your own puppets if you'd like later on. We have some red paper and some blue paper and then because I've got three puppet figures I've got three popsicle sticks. Those are what's inside your kit. You're also going to need some tape. This is my lovely tape dispenser. Um, you can use glue as well, but you will need to be patient if you use glue um, with how long um, it will take to dry. You will also need some scissors. And finally, you're going to need some crayons or colored markers, um, colored pencils. Those will work as well. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is take your cereal box and you're going to take it apart. There is going to be a seam. Cereal boxes are put together in such a way that there is a seam that you can find. So you're gonna find the seam and take your cereal box apart so that we have a flat cereal box. So we've got our flat cereal box. We're gonna fold that just so that we have it nice and flat because we're going to end up creating a proscenium arch with that. Now we have our flat box and we have that flap that was once um, glued there and you want to make sure that you have that flap at, top, at the top. You're going to take a crayon or marker or colored pencil and you're going to draw your arch. And a good thing to do is maybe go up and I have a little bit of glue I'm fighting against here, which is fine too. And draw your arch. And so I've got my arch and now I need to figure out where my middle is going to be. And I think my middle is going to be there for a pointy arch here. And around there making sure you can see it nice and dark. So, we've got our arch. Then the other thing that you need to do is underneath here, you're going to draw a square, which is going to be the opening of your stage. So you've got your square and your arch drawn. And now it's time to cut it out. So I've got my scissors. Now the arch is going to be pretty easy because it is on the top here. So you're going to cut along there. Now, do you have to have the same exact design as me? No, you can do any design you want. So I've cut the top out there. Our center here is gonna be a little trickier and those of you who are younger might need a little bit of a grown-up's help for this because what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your scissors, you're gonna find a spot, it doesn't have to be on the edge and actually it probably should not be at the edge. You can do it even at the center or close to the center. You're going to poke your scissors through 
through your box. I had to give it a little extra elbow grease there. And you're going to cut out that square. So you're going to have to go out. Now, if you want to be precise, you could measure so that your sides are all even, if you want to. I kind of freehanded mine, which is fine too. But if you want to have a nice, like, precise measured area. We have a hole. Now is your time. If you would like to color your proscenium arch, you're going to color this side of your. Um, you're going to color this side of your stage. And I'm going to give it a try, and I'll be right back with the finished paint coloring there. So I have colored. And I just colored the front part. You can color this whole thing if you want. Um, but I'm just going to do the front part of this. And you'll see I did some decoration along the um, decorations with some dots. If you had stickers or some sparkly markers or sparkly glue, you could definitely add to this. Now we are going to the side that has the printing on it. And as you see, we've got printing. We don't want to see that through our awesome uh, arch that we've created, because that performance space, if we fold it, would just look funny. It almost looks like a TV, but that's not what we want here. We want a stage. That is where your blue paper comes in. So you're going to Put your blue paper and you might have to trim it down along the sides here depending on the size of your box although you might be able to just go by but you can use the flaps to help guide if you need to measure out um, a uh, section to cut off of the blue paper you can do what I did which is take that flap and fold it up and out the top you don't have to worry about it out the top the top won't be a problem so I am going to trim up my paper just a little bit. And you can use tape or glue to stick this onto the back here. And I think I'll use my tape today. Now you can draw on this paper too and make it a beautiful background for whatever story you're going to tell. So we'll stick that on with tape. So Heather's trying to uh, not knock her laptop over here. So now when I fold it up, it looks much better. And you could even, if you wanted to, put some of the strips down here to cover up the bottom as well, if you want to. The next thing that we have to do, so we've got those. One other thing that we're going to add, because a lot of times a stage has a curtain, is we're going to create curtains. And that's where our red paper comes in. And the best way to get two identical curtains is to fold the paper in half. We're not going to cut on the fold. Instead, we're going to cut on the open ends. And we're going to cut some curtains. And cut some curtain shapes. So just a little curve. They could be, if you wanted, you could have just straight curtains as well. I'll show you. That was on the fold there. So with that red paper, if you wanted to just have straight curtains, you could have just straight curtains on the side, which works. Or you can do the curved curtains there. It's really up to your preference. All right. So, 
Now we have to tape our curtains in and you want to make sure that they're resting on the bottom here right where that fold is so that they don't get crinked up when you fold up your box. So And mine's kind of peeking over the top, so I'm going to trim it. Does it need to be straight and neat? Nope, as long as people can't see it, you don't have to worry about that. And I'll do the other side. I'm going to trim that one up just a little bit. All right, we have that glued in there, and now we are ready to put our box together. So we're gonna fold it up so that our colored side's on the outside. You're going to fold those side flaps in, and I'm gonna do it this way. It's like we're almost putting the box back together, just inside out. In fact, that is what we are doing. We are folding the box back together inside out. And we'll do the other side. Remember there's this bottom flap too, so you're going to fold that in. Fold that in. Might need a little convincing there at points. Take some tape. And again, you can use white glue or glue sticks to do this, but you'll have to be a little patient um, because it will take time to dry. And look at that. You've got a little stage here, and you can, if you want to trim off the top a little bit, I do see mine sticking up just a little bit. Go right across that top. Go from both sides here. and maybe put a little bit of tape on there to keep it on nice and firm. All right. We have created our, our cereal box stage. So we've got our cereal box stage. Now we need our puppets, our players to do that. So we're going to put this to the side and we're going to get out that sheet of coloring characters. Now if you do not have these or if you're not wanting to use the templates that were in your kits, that is a-okay. In fact, if you wanted to, you can use this cardstock on its own on the back and draw your own figures instead. For this example though, I am going to color my characters and I will be back after I finish coloring them. Well, after some diligent coloring, I have my characters all colored in now. And now it's time to cut them out. And so you're going to cut them out now, friends. You do not have to stay exactly on the lines. You can even bubble cut these. Um, it depends on how much time you want to spend cutting them out. You could be really, really good about, you know, getting all the different nooks and crannies, or you could just bubble cut because bubble cutting works just as well um, with our stick puppets here. And especially if you drew some of your own designs and you're wanting, um, something fancy on there and you don't want to ruin the design by cutting into it, you can bubble cut. Now, if you wanted to cut it really close and something ended up getting cut by accident, you can tape on the back because no one's ever going to see the back of these. So there's always a fix if there's a problem. So no worries. Um, so I'm going to cut, I'm bubble cutting um, just for the sake of time. And almost cut into grandma, but that's okay. All right. 
Now those of you who did not do the kits or have gone to the website where I've had the information posted with all the materials you need, I put the web address for where I got these templates. There are actually several pages of these. They're finger puppet templates um, that are just the right size for doing this kind of project, like the stick puppet project. Um, so if you wanted to expand um, your characters, you could definitely do that by printing them out. Cardstock works best just because it gives a little firmer, but if you don't have cardstock at home, regular paper is okay as well. When you do them, you might want to double up the paper just so that it gives a little firmness to it. So we have our characters cut out now. We have three popsicle sticks. You're going to take your popsicle stick to the very top there. You're going to have it enough on there that it's um, making good contact for your tape. And you're going to tape your character onto your popsicle stick. And I'm going to do that for each of my characters. And the great thing about doing this with tape is um, if when we put them in the theater they're too tall or too short, you can adjust the stick with tape can't do that with with glue as much so tape is always a better option for that now if you don't have clear tape you can use masking tape again because this is how you're going to see them you're never going to see what's on the back of these um, and then we're ready with our theater to do our little play so we can do you know once upon a time there was a little girl named little red riding hood who went to go see her granny and her on her way to see her granny she ran into a wolf who at, convinced her to take um take a trip and get some flowers before going to see her granny and granny was at home and she heard a knock on the door and she went and that wolf caught granny and changed locked her up and changed into her outfit to wait for Little Red Riding Hood. And Little Red Riding Hood came and she came in and she said, my grandma, what big eyes you have. And grandma said, the better to see you, my dear. And she said, grandma, what big ears you have. And grandma said, the better to hear you, my dear. And Little Red said, but grandma, what a big mouth you have. And he said, the better to eat you, my dear. But this is where Miss Heather changes the story. Little Red was a ninja, and she karate chopped the wolf out of the room, and then her granny in the closet let her out, and together they had snacks and laughed about how foolish that wolf was. So that's how you perform with this week's puppet stage. You can do your own. You could do a song if you want. You could um, do anything with these puppet stages. You could change up the background. You could draw grandma's house. Or if you wanted to do like the three little pigs, you could do the little pigs houses on there and pop those in there as well. These have limitless possibilities um, out of our cereal boxes. So have fun building and performing with this week's puppets share with me your pictures if you can if you want to send video you can and i will catch you next week we are going to be doing shadow puppets and i'll be putting the supply list out on monday for our shadow puppets that we'll be building next friday have a wonderful day